Sometimes when I'm using Vitting Flow, I kind of forget that I'm creating a web application. And so, for example, if I have to load a grid with data that com comes from a uh, SQL table, I might just end up loading the whole data of the table in the grid, just passing the item. It's very simple with, with Vitting Flow to do that, right? Um, but when you realize that you're going to deploy that application in a web server and then you are going to have a lot of users requesting this data at the same time, it could become a bottleneck. It might make your application crash even. Uh, so so that in this situation is where uh, you should be uh, um, using lazy loading. So only when you have a grid, for example, with a few dozens of um, rows there, say a hundred or a bit more than a hundred, it's okay to maybe load all the data. Um, of course, it depends on, on the actual uh, requirements and the actual use case. But if you have more than that, you should be using lazy loading. Okay, so I have this project here that I created in a previous video. You can find a link to it in the description of this one. And in short, what I have is a book using JPA, a book repository using Spring Data, and a book service that uses the repository and it has the find all method and that's it. Um, also, let me show you that I'm logging all the queries uh, with JPA. And what else? This is this is just a bug that I found in one of the libraries that I'm using, but it should be fixed in in a um, future version. So you sh you shouldn't you shouldn't worry about this one. Um, if you're interested in the in the issue, uh, I can share the a link to it. So just let me know. But anyway, there's also a view where I'm adding a grid to a vertical layout and I'm loading all the, um, the books from the database. So let's see how many books I have in the database. Count ID from a book. I have, uh, I forgot something, select, this is not, uh, this is SQL not JQL, right? Anyway, so uh, 50,000 books in the database, uh, which is nothing compared to, for example, the largest library in the world, which is in the in the US. The Library of Congress, it has like 170 million items. So 50,000, and still we're gonna see some problems uh, if we just leave this as is. And I'll show you. So if we request the view, it starts to load. And it takes a lot of time because it's creating this class and it's uh, especially because it's loading all this data here. 50,000 books still loading. So the user is going to be really uh, annoyed at this point, maybe clicking a hundred times on some button or hitting enter. And then, okay, we have it now. Um, and it's all these books are in memory. In fact, there is some kind of lazy loading already that is automatically done by the grid component, but this is a different kind of lazy loading. It's if we go to the log, we see only one SQL query, but the grid component, well, it, it, all, it has all the, the items in memory, but it's not sending all the items to the client here, just a few. So that's the reason it's like empty and then gets populated, right? So that, that's good, but still, it's not ideal, right? Because if there's another user trying to access this uh, application, or in this case, it's actually the same user, but it's just opening a new tab, but let's say it's two users, uh, after they wait and wait and wait for all the data to be uh, fetched, uh, let's wait and see what happens. Come on. There you have out of memory error, it's here, more visible. Uh, so that's not good, right? Let's stop this application. Not very good, so we need to change that. We need to use lazy loading. So let's start by fixing the interposter. We don't need to fix anything because we, we have already a lot of methods that are useful from the JPA repository interface. But in this service, we have the find all method that it, it's the, the one causing kind of the problem right now. So we need to fix that. So first we need to receive like the page and a page size, right? So we're going to return data only uh, 
with this with, within these parameters. So give me a page and how many items of that page you want to see. Uh, in this case, the grid is going to report that in a moment. And then the find all method is overloaded with uh, this version that receives a pageable. And for that, we can use the page request dot off method. We pass the page and page size. And now from here, we are going to uh, return return a stream. Now this method returns a list, so let's fix that. Let's return stream. Yeah, that's correct. Of course, there is an, an associated problem here, right? But the cool thing is that, let me remove all this for a moment, is that the grid also has uh, overloaded this, this set items method. And in particular, I'm interested in fetch callback, right? So new fetch callback, can I do that? Yeah. And this is a functional um, interface. So we can actually, well, let me show you first what we need to return. We need to return a stream of books, which is what we get from the service already. But we get something called query. And if we go inside this one, you'll see that we have the offset, limit, sort order, so all the kind of things we can get from this, this object. So let's change this to lambda expression. And now what we want to do is return, um, in fact, this is not, not necessary. Let's, uh, let me get rid of this so we can see uh, more easily what we are doing, I believe. Um, what I need to do is to call this service dot, now we have find all, but we need to pass the get, uh, I think it was page, query, what oh, is a method, get page size. I wonder why this is not auto completing. Maybe it's because I have so many uh, errors. Uh, let me see what did I wrong here. Oh, I inserted one more over here. There we go. We don't need this. And in fact, we need one more. Okay. Very good. <laughs> so it's working. So now we are we're calling this this method or the query the the sorry the grid um, is now aware of the page size and the and and the and the page. That's because it knows where the these um, the position right where it's being rendered. So let's now run this application again and see what happens when we scroll through the data and when we request the application because we want to see if it's faster for example uh, so let's wait for it it seems like it's almost completed and still compiling so now it started requested this time was way faster right and if we have a look at the log then we'll see that there are many um, a query is there, right? So if I keep scrolling, it's going to now add more and more queries because I'm scrolling through data and now the grid is asking the, or it's actually calling the um, find all method from the service, which in turn is using sprint data and using uh, a better query right there. So much faster. And if we open in another tab, we get all the data there as well. One more. So we can have now many, many uh, users, no problem with that, no out of memory errors. So, um, yeah, so that's how uh, this works. The one last thing maybe that you might want to see is that there is a set page size in case you want to put something something there that, that would make more sense. Now, take into account that this doesn't mean that it's gonna, you're going to have here only one query every uh, or, or that it's going to request only um, one handed because it could request several pages already. Uh, that is uh, the grid component, right? But um, you can tweak a little bit the, the way um, data is requested using this method. All right, so that's how you implement lazy loading with Valiant Flow and the grid component. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.